Mount Shrugge in Florida and Neon, they only have the first and second energy levels. These elements, therefore, will not be able to expand their octet for reasons coming shortly. Elements in the third period are occupying three electron shells. Now, if I just move all this down a little bit so we can see it a bit more clearly. The third energy level, or third shell, is composed of an S, a P, and a D subshell. One S orbital, three P orbitals, and five D orbitals. Now, let's look at phosphorus. Phosphorus has 15 electrons. It's element number 15. In terms of filling these um, electrons in boxes, it will have two electrons in its first S orbital, 2S2, 2P6, 3S2. That takes me up to now 12. I've got three left, so it'll be 3P3. If I were to draw electrons in boxes, it would be a pair, a spin pair in here, 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 and then three singly occupied P orbitals. Now then, often when phosphorus reacts, it has, from our GCSE understanding, five electrons in its outer shell. Yes, it does. It's got these five electrons in its outer shell. At GCSE, let's say we're going to draw the bonding for phosphine, which is uh, pH 3. A phosphorus, one phosphorus atom will covalently bond with, I'll do a dot and cross diagram, three hydrogen atoms. Happy days. We've got three covalent bonds. We've got P, H, 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 and the phosphorus has a little lone pair there. Happy days. At GCSE, we're all happy. It's got eight electrons out of shell. Jobs are good and we can move on with our lives. Now, some more reactive elements, elements that are highly reactive and really want to share um, electrons with other atoms, can force elements like phosphorus to expand their octet, to have more than eight electrons in their outer shell. Now, using a GCSE standard, how is that possible? The shell only has eight electron spaces. Not true. We can see the third energy level has actually got, if I fill this out fully, I could say 3D0. This phosphorus is now filled by covalently bonding with three hydrogen atoms. It's filled its 1s, 2s, 2p, 3s and 3p orbitals. However, it does have a completely empty 3D uh, subshell. Highly reactive elements, such as fluorine, chlorine, oxygen, can force period three and four, five or six elements to expand their octet because they have empty D subshell orbitals. So PCl5 is a common example where chlorine, a highly electronegative element, a highly reactive element, um, a very oxidising element as well, which you can look at later, chlorine will force the phosphorus to share these two electrons as well. Phosphorus has five electrons is in its outer shell. In its third shell, it has five electrons. It can be forced to share all five of them by promoting two of those electrons into a three, or promoting one into a 3D orbital. It can then share a pair here, 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 and here. It can have a total of 10 electrons in its outer shell. This is a bit of a simplification as well for A level because technically these atomic orbitals will hybridize in order to form um, bonds.
responding orbitals, but don't worry about that right now. So the phosphorus is able to, with elements like fluorine and chlorine, expand its octet. And I will just, uh, actually I'll do fluorine, I quite like fluorine. Um, and I prefer doing crosses. So fluorine is able to force the phosphorus to expand its octet because it has empty orbitals in its highest energy level. And there we go. So the phosphorus has made, looks like a little dude, looks like a little man the way I've drawn it here, five covalent bonds with fluorine. Obviously, this diagram I've drawn here is a 2D representation. We know, because we know that five pairs of electrons will repel to maximum separation to form a trigonal bipyramid, whoopsie, bipyramidal uh, shape with bond angles of 90 degrees, 120 degrees, and 180 degrees. So 90 degrees, um, between these three in the plane and the ones perpendicular to it. And someone in our trigonal by pyramidal shape. Okay, so using this, let's just recap why nitrogen is not able to expand its octet in the same way. Nitrogen doesn't have an empty 2D orbital. In order for nitrogen to expand its octet, it wouldn't be expanding its outer shell, it would have to move into a third shell, in which case that is significantly unfavourable. Because phosphorus has an empty 3D subshell, it can be forced with highly reactive elements to use those orbitals. Let's try another example. Another example which links to shapes quite nicely as well, um, of SF6. So sulphur has 16 electrons, 1s2, 2s2, 2p3, oh, sorry, 2p6, 3s2, 3p4. So it's got one more electron. So 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p4. Two singularly occupied P orbitals, one fully occupied. But remember, it also has an empty 3D subshell. Therefore, I can expand the octet here because I don't just have eight potential vacancies for electrons, I've got 18. Uh, SF6 is the uh, standard compound, hypervalent compound that A-level syllabi look at, where the sulphur will share a pair, oh, one of its electrons to get one back with six, diff oh, I've done that again. six different phosphorus fluorine atoms. I do apologise, my brain is fried during lockdown. Here it is, here's our um, octahedral molecule shape, geometry, bond angles of 90 degrees between the ones perpendicular to the plane within the plane, and you can also say uh, 180 degrees for any opposite uh, bond angles for the uh, F, S, F bond angles. They're all 90 degrees or 120, 180 if they're opposite. So sulphur has six electrons in its outer shell. Because it's got this empty 3D orbital, it can expand its octet, it can reach hypervalency, it can react in order to make uh, a substance with more than eight electrons in its outer shell. So this here has got 12 electrons in its outer shell, SF6. SCl6 doesn't actually form because the sulphur atom to form a covalent bond to six different 
uh, chlorine atoms, actually the chlorine atoms are too big to get six of them around the central sulfur. SF4 is what forms with uh, sulfur, so that doesn't exist. Uh, sulfur tetrachloride does exist, which again has an expanded octet, but not fully expanded in SF6. I think I'm rambling randomly there. Uh, the most extreme uh, hypervalent molecule that you're probably going to see at GCSE, I mean A-level, would be uh, this. Iodine has seven electrons inside a shell. Now, iodine is all the way down here in period uh, five. So it's got five shells. It has an empty 4D subshell. Sorry, it has an empty 5D subshell. It is able to expand its octet and up to 14 electrons is out of shell because it will share each one of those seven electrons with a fluorine to end up with 14 electrons in its outer shell. It only does this with fluorine, it can't do it with anything else. Another famous example of an expanded octet is xenon pentafluoride. Xenon has a full outer shell. Xenon all the way down here, next to iodine, five energy levels, five uh, shells, it's uh, also able to expand its octet with fluorine. The most important thing to notice is that you could be asked to draw the bonding in something that is hypervalent. The only atoms that are able to expand their octet are period three, four, five and six, non-metals here. Obviously, Metals aren't going to become hypervalent because they always lose electrons, they're not going to gain electrons. Um, but the non-metals of periods 3, 4 and 5, 6 and 7 if they really existed, would be able to expand their octet when reacting with highly reactive elements. One other famous example actually would be uh, this as well. Sulfuric acid, H2SO4. That central sulfur has made a total of six covalent bonds. It has uh, expanded this octet to have 12 electrons in it um, because it's reacting with a more reactive oxidizing element, oxygen, which forces it to expand its octet. Hopefully that makes sense. Yeah, I did ramble quite a lot.